hello everyone welcome back to my channel and today i am going to discuss state functions and path functions and i am also going to explain that how internal energy is a state function and heat and work are path functions so in one of my previous videos i gave you an idea about state functions and the path function i told you that state functions are those properties of the system whose values depends upon the initial and final state of the system and does not depends upon the path followed whereas path functions are those functions whose values depends upon the path followed okay and now we are quite conversant with the various thermodynamic terms and we know the basics of thermodynamics so we can also study these properties in some details okay so state functions can also be defined in a different manner a uh, thermodynamic quantity is said to be a state function if during a thermodynamic process change in its value depends upon its value in the initial and the final state and does not depends upon the path followed okay then that quantity will be a state function let us explain it with with an example let us consider a process in which a is being converted into b and ub is the internal energy of b and ua is the internal energy of a then the change in internal energy will be equal to ua minus ub uh, sorry it will be equal to ub minus ua that is final minus initial so this will be the change in internal energy so let us discuss that how the internal energy is a state function okay and for explaining this let us take the example of this pv diagram and in this pv diagram i am having a cyclic process in which a is being converted into b by following the path 1 and b is again coming back to a by following the path 2 okay and at point a pa va and ua are the pressure volume and internal energy and at b these are the values okay and let us suppose that when i move from a to b then the change in internal energy is delta u and when i come back that is from b to a then change in internal energy is delta u prime okay and i am also supposing that this delta u is not equal to delta u prime understood now let us explain it with some values okay i am assigning a value of 20 kilo joule to the internal energy of a and i am giving value 40 kilo joule to the internal energy of b then what is the change in internal energy that is ub minus ua and it will be equal to 40 minus 20 okay so in this process 20 kilo joule energy is being absorbed and i am having delta u will be equal to 20 that is 20 kilo joule of energy is absorbed and this process is a, an endothermic process and if the forward reaction is you know if the forward reaction is endothermic then the backward reaction is exothermic okay and i am also supposing that delta u prime is equal to 30 in this way that is delta u prime is greater than delta u okay this means that when i am going from a to b how much energy is being absorbed that is 20 and when i am coming back from b to a then how much energy is being released 30 understood 
this means that how much energy is being created or we are having by carrying out this process that is delta u prime minus delta u that is equal to 30 minus 20 equal to 10 understood i am explaining it again that when i am going from a to b energy absorbed is 20 and when i am coming back back from b to a energy released is 30 this means when i am carrying out this process i am absorbing 20 uh, kilojoule of energy and energy which is being released is 30 this means that 10 kilojoule of energy is being created during this process and which is against the first law of thermodynamics because i will just carry out this process i will i will convert a into b and how much energy i will consume 20 and when i will come back from b to a how much energy i am going to get 30 okay and i have consumed 20 getting 30 net profit of what 10 kilojoule of energy understood this means that energy is being created during this process which is against the first law of thermodynamics energy cannot be created if i am absorbing plus 20 kilojoule uh, during this process uh, what amount of energy should be released it should be 20 equal amount of energy should be released this proves that delta u should be equal to delta u prime this means that value of delta u does not depend upon the path followed it remains the same understanding whether i move from a to b or b to a and if let us consider that uh, value of delta u prime is less than delta u suppose that energy absorbed that is delta u is equal to 20 and delta u prime that is energy released is equal to 10 this is again against the first law of thermodynamics because energy will be destroyed how i am gaining 20 kilojoule of energy and i am getting 10 kilojoule then where that 10 kilojoule of energy has gone this means that energy has been destroyed and which is again the uh, which is again against the first law of thermodynamics because energy cannot be destroyed so in both the cases delta u should be equal to delta u prime energy change should remain the same okay and it proves that internal energy is a state function it depends only upon the initial and the final state it does not depend upon the path followed understood very interesting so now let us discuss that how heat is a state uh, sorry path function heat is a path function so let us consider the same process again that i am converting a into b okay and i have two options i can convert a into b under adiabatic conditions that i will carry out this process in a way that there will be no heat exchange heat will not be absorbed or evolved so, so this process is going to be adiabatic okay so in this case change in heat delta q will be equal to zero because no heat will be exchanged neither absorbed nor evolved now i can convert a into b isothermally this means that the process will be isothermal that is while i will carry out this reaction the temperature will remain constant throughout and i have told you when i was discussing in one of my videos these different types of processes i told you that in isothermal process 
temperature is constant but heat will be exchanged between system and the surrounding mean to say that is delta q can be positive or it can be negative if heat is absorbed then delta q is going to be positive and if heat is given out then delta q is going to be negative so this means that if this process is carried out isothermally then delta q will be either positive or negative so you can see that the change in heat it depends upon the path that how that process is being carried out adiabatic process there was no change in heat delta q was zero and isothermal delta q could be positive it could be negative understood this means that heat is a path function it depends upon the path how the process is carried out and does not depends upon the initial and the final state and let us discuss that how work is a path function i have told you i have explained it in a way that suppose i am moving from a to b i am going from a to b in this way i am going from a to b okay so this is the path and i can follow a different path i can go first here then i can go here now this is a different path okay and work done will be different a shorter path less work will be done and a longer path more work will be done but now i am going to explain it in a different way suppose again i am expanding a gas let us con consider a gas contained in a cylinder fitted with a frictionless piston and you are going to have this example many time in the thermodynamics gas contained inside a cylinder fitted with a frictionless piston okay now the expansion can be carried out in two different ways for example suppose p external is the pressure acting on the piston or the or on the gas system and gas is expanding against this constant pressure then the work done then the work done is given by what p external into delta v then the work done will be equal to p external into delta v and suppose if the expansion of the gas if the expansion of the gas is being carried out under vacuum i have also explained it if vacuum mean to say there is no pressure that is p external is equal to zero when there is vacuum there is no external pressure and when p external is equal to zero then the work done will be equal to zero and i am expanding the gas to the same value if the initial value of the volume is v1 and the final value of the volume is v2 in both the cases these values are going to be same but first expansion is under constant pressure and second expansion is under vacuum so the gas is being expanded in two different ways or in two different paths okay under constant pressure and under vacuum and both the cases work is different p first case p external delta v in second case work is zero so in this way work is a path function so i have explained that how this internal energy is a state function and how these uh, heat and work they are path functions so the heat and work they don't depend upon the initial and you know final conditions uh, for final state they depend upon what path followed and i will use this you have to keep uh, these things in mind in my next video in which i am going to teach you exact and inexact differentials okay so i hope that you have understood uh, these terms so thank you very much and if you have liked my video then please like share and subscribe my channel thank you very much